South Africa's last apartheid president has died at the age of 85. F.W. de Klerk was both praised and criticized for his role in ending white minority rule. So what legacy does he leave behind? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Hashim Ahalbala. The death of South Africa's last white president has drawn mixed reactions. F.W. de Klerk was jointly awarded the 1993 Nobel Peace Prize with Nelson Mandela for dismantling the system of racial segregation known as apartheid. Some praised him for ending white minority rule, while others called him a traitor. South Africa continues to be affected by the legacy of apartheid, and it remains one of the most divided and unequal countries in the world. We'll bring in our guests in a moment. First, Famida Miller looks back at the life of F.W. de Klerk. This was the moment when South Africa's last white leader signaled the end of apartheid. I wish to put it plainly that the government has taken a firm decision to release Mr. Mandela unconditionally. I'm serious. I'm serious. In a speech to Parliament, Frederick Willem de Klerk, or FW as he was known, stunned the world. He freed Nelson Mandela and promised equal rights that would lead to South Africa's first fully democratic elections. If we did not take the initiatives we took, I have no doubt in my mind that we would have reached a point that the majority of all the people in South Africa would have taken hands with the total international community and would have united behind one common goal, and that is to overthrow the regime. We avoided that. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man. Within days, anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela walked free after 27 years in prison. We pray for God's guidance. I thank you. A deeply conservative Afrikaner, F.W. was never known as a reformer, but he'd come to realize in his own words that to cling to power for the white population group means facing a revolution. We must find a way in this country as blacks and as whites to live together in peace. Revolution almost came anyway. The black townships erupted in violence. Hardline Afrikaners threatened bloody revenge. Lengthy negotiations resulted in a non-racial constitution and mostly peaceful elections in 1994. Millions of black people voted for the first time endorsing the African National Congress and Nelson Mandela as president. As the man who co-wrote The End of Apartheid, de Klerk shared the Nobel Peace Prize with Mandela. He later chaired the Global Leadership Fund, promoting good governance worldwide. To many within the ranks of his Afrikaner people, FW was a traitor to the end. History will remember a leader who knew that white supremacy had run its course. FW de Klerk recorded a message just before his death. He apologized to those who felt he hadn't accepted responsibility for the damage caused by racial segregation. Let me today, in this last message, repeat. I, without qualification, apologize for the pain and the hurt and the indignity and the damage that apartheid has done to black, brown and Indians in South Africa. President Cyril Ramaphosa says de Klerk helped put South Africa on the path to democracy. He was a leader of a, a party that was largely discredited in relation to the role that the National Party played in enforcing apartheid. But he had the courage to step away from the path that his party that he led had embarked upon.
Let's bring in our guests. All of them are joining us from Johannesburg. Tembisa Fakude is a senior research fellow at Africa Asia Dialogues. Kim Heller is a political analyst and author of No White Lies, Black Politics and White Power. And Monsieur Lekota, President of Congress of the People and a member of South African Parliament. Warm welcome to you all. Tembisa, why is it that people in South Africa continue to be divided about the legacy of de Klerk? Well, former President de Klerk has been a divisive figure for the fact that he was the leader of the national party, which was an Africana dominated political party. It was inevitable that he, at his death, he would court um, a divided opinion. Um, and uh, him being the last apartheid president, again, it became very obvious that at his death, he was likely uh, or most likely to court uh, controversy. But importantly is that the majority of South Africans lived through very difficult times during apartheid. And it was part and parcel of that, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, yes, he did later on initiate political discussions with the uh, African National Congress led by Nelson Mandela, which actually granted him that status of being a reconciler. But the majority of the people in South Africa still remember him as one of the architects and perpetrators of all of those uh, crimes against humanity, an accusation which mm -hmm. later on in his life refused to accept and hence the controversy uh, that surrounded him just before his death. Kim, frail and sick, he made that statement at the end of his life saying that I apologize to those who felt that I didn't come about in the, most, in the strongest possible terms to denounce what happened in the past. But the general sentiment remains the same. De Klerk missed an opportunity to denounce apartheid. Yes, thank you. And I think F.W. de Klerk, I'm very distressed at how the media is covering the death of this man, because he was certainly no hero. He was a ruthless murderer that of, a, of a, an apartheid regime that shattered the lives of millions of, of black South Africans. And he had multiple opportunities to apologize and he never took accountability. So the son of one of the victims that he killed released a statement yesterday saying that it's a great pity that he died without ever having to account for the great sins against the black people of this country. And I, for one, would not accept his apology. In fact, in life and in death, he subscribes to the, to the tenets of white supremacy because in that apology speech, he actually gives opinion and criticism to the ANC democratically elected black government about how to run the country. I mean, the arrogance of a man in life and in death. And I agree with the sentiments of the leader of the PAC, a pan-Africanist progressive black consciousness party mm -hmm. in South Africa. And today we should be mourning and our heart should be with the families of black South Africans that were maimed and murdered. That this man should not even be buried on South African soil he should be put out in the water, but not the African seas. And mm -hmm. that is a sentiment that is shared by millions of black families who still do not know today mm -hmm. where the remains of their, their children, their brothers, their fathers and mothers have been buried as a direct result mm -hmm. of FW and his... Monsieur, the fact that South Africans remain divided about this legacy, one who, some people say that this is someone who oversaw the transition to democracy. Others say, no, this was, this was someone who was instrumental in the continuation of the segregationist system of apartheid. What does it tell about South Africa? Does it say anything about the fact that the wounds of the past still remain there in your country? I think it's very important uh, uh, when we look at the life of a single individual who obviously occupied a very important position towards the end of his life, to see what should he have prioritized 
in the closing years of our lives in the prisons, we were more concerned about how to get out of the trap that apartheid had placed all of us. Many people had already lost their lives along the road we traveled, but there was also a huge risk that if we didn't manage the transition out of apartheid, we could also contribute to the deaths of millions mm -hmm. of black, white, colored Indian sections of the population. So the choice we had to make was to manage the transition such that we save as many lives as was possible and save a, an opportunity that could make it possible for us mm -hmm. to reconstruct, reconstruct South African society and enable us to join the community of nations in a manner that would forever uh, be a decoration rather than okay. a disaster for all of us. Tembisa. And mm -hmm. I think we did that. Okay, I see your point. Tembisa. This, 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 this argument that at least the transition saved us from a descent into anarchy and a civil war, should it be seen as a credit for someone like F.W. de Klerk? Not entirely, but suffice to say that he was much more braver than many of his predecessors. It took a much more difficult decision, uh, mm -hmm. whether he was coerced to do so because of the ANC or not, but he did take the decision. But the contribution towards the realization of freedom in South Africa, I don't think can be attributed to FW, FW de Klerk or any of the Africana leaders. It mm -hmm. was as a result of the uh, continued pressure from the liberation movement, such as the ANC, Pan-Africanist Congress and others who pushed the Africana government mm -hmm. to eventually uh, concede that it was inevitable uh, for them to begin to embrace a new political trajectory. He managed somehow to take a difficult position of pursuing uh, a, a constructive democratic negotiations with the black leaders. Kim, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev was the chairman of the Communist Party, leader of the Soviet Union. But he is mostly remembered by introducing perestroika and glasnost that paved the way to the end of the uh, civil, uh, to the Cold War. Now, when it comes to de Klerk, do you think that if he had come out and said, I am, I'm sorry, but apartheid was a crime against humanity, that would have made a massive change on the perceptions of the people they have about him? Yes, perhaps, but you know, apologies are not enough. And white South Africans in this country and its leaders have never apologized and made reparations for apartheid. And the legacy of F.W. de Klerk today is not a rainbow nation or a free South Africa. It's the fact that for the majority of black South Africans, they, they, have, they remain landless in their own land. Land has never been returned to them. Their economic fortunes are devastated. We are the most unequal society in the world. So what a, a uh, leader, and I say that, you know, in explanation marks, like F.W. de Klerk should have done, as well as white people, is to structurally transform the economy, to return stolen land, to transform the economic and put it in the hands of black people. But that has not happened. So an apology alone is not sufficient. It would be a genuine reparations for the most grievous harm done to South Africans, Black South Africans, mm -hmm. on the back of white interests. And I'd just like to say something. You know, we whitewash our history, and it's very dangerous because he was forced. The apartheid regime had lost legitimacy. There was internal strife. There was international pressure. There was a growth of liberation movements, as the professor correctly said, way over the ANC to the PAC and others. And that was the force 
So even mm -hmm. Mandela speaks in his book, actually, about the fact that if W. de Klerk made these reforms so that the Africana could be included in the new dispens dispensation, and that is the truth that we should be writing in our history mm -hmm. books. Mosela, what does his passing mean for the future of South Africa? Is it likely to further raise the debate about how to move forward and turn the chapter of the years of apartheid? Many of us who embraced, uh, who embraced the resolution of our conflict here believed that it, would, it gave us an opportunity to preserve available resources and use that to educate and train large sections of uh, the population of our country so that we could use them and use their capacities to reconstruct our society and rebuild it uh, on the foundations of what, what we inherited from uh, the apartheid order. For no one can deny that uh, we inherited a country with uh, significant infrastructure on which we could have built and advanced much, much uh, quicker than most other African countries. And, uh, and in this way, we would have, would have salvaged huge numbers of uh, the people of our country and we would have made mm -hmm. what, seemed, what seemed to be a, a backward situation. We could have moved it fast, much faster. I, I can see where you, where, 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 which direction you're going. And does it explain, let me go to Tembisa, the general frustration in South Africa now against the backdrop of the recent municipal elections, particularly against uh, the, the frustration against the uh, ANC. Does it, does it give us any indication about the tough time, times ahead for a country like South Africa? Well, it does uh, give indication of tough times ahead, but it also presents a, another um, impression, which is that the South African democracy is maturing. People now do see alternatives in terms of their political choices. Mm -hmm. And it was demonstrated during this time around that most people, although most decided to stay away from, from elections, but it is a maturing democracy. Uh, the fact that the ANC is losing a majority in terms of uh, control and governing certain municipalities, that in itself is, is a positive, I guess, mm -hmm. in, in from an African uh, standpoint, that you're gonna have this peaceful transitioning into a new political outlook uh, by the majority of the people in South Africa. But I, mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I want to comment on the, the point that was made uh, about F.W. de Klerk mm -hmm. and him being the, the, the person who ushered in democracy. We have to give him that credit. He actually assisted. Mandela said the same, gave him Although that credit, you might, that you, this was the man who took a very unpopular decision. Although you might have those who would argue, on the other hand, that there were some shortfalls to the pro progression towards uh, democracy and that the reconciliation was not completed and that there a lot had to be done to try to take the country into a new direction. Kim, now you have the passing of de Klerk, you have the major setback that the ANC suffered, and you have the Africa, South Africans who would say, our hope was to see a vibrant democracy that could translate into positive outcome for the South Africans. What we're seeing instead is a pervasive a culture of corruption among the elite, particularly within the ANC, leaving many people to grapple about how to move forward. Yes, I mean, the corruption is a problem, but it's also not, it shouldn't be painted as a black government thing. Actually, if we look at the corruption done by white business and white governments before 1994, it was grand corruption. I mean, even the act of land theft in this country was probably the greatest act of corruption in this country. That said, I think the ANC has lost the plot and mm -hmm. the voters are realizing that. 
And I think the, the problem is more to do with the fact with the national consciousness, because the national consciousness is that we must be a reconciled nation and we must accommodate white interests and black interests. Mm -hmm. And that all that is reconciling black people with their poverty and white people with their privilege. Mm -hmm. It's a new national consciousness, which is an ideology that the ANC does not have, but perhaps parties to the left with black consciousness do that there has to be an economy that serves the black child first and puts the dignity of the black child first. We are going to be stuck in the most unequal society in the world forever. So mm -hmm. the time for South Africa now is to face the inconvenient truth that there was no real transformation. Mm -hmm. There might have been a shift of political dynamics, but for the majority of people, the constitution has not helped them. They mm -hmm. live jobless, landless, and in deep poverty. Mosewa, if you look at the outcome of the latest uh, uh, municipal elections, you will see that ANC was not the only one to suffer a setback. The Democratic Alliance itself failed to gain momentum. What is quite interesting is that the EF EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, or the Action SA, are gaining momentum, which could give you an indication that South Africa is moving towards what could be turning also the chapter of the ANC itself? Uh, look, the, the unfortunate thing is that uh, the new circumstances that have arisen in our country do not favor any particular party. It's actually hitting at all of us that we, we should have, when we should have rallied together and take full advantage of the opportunity of using resources to the benefit of all of us. We still did try to have sections that want to get this for themselves, section that want that for themselves. And this continued division of South African society on the basis of <coughs> what happened in the past is not to our advantage. What is to our advantage? Mm -hmm is if we can pull ourselves together and say, look, now it's an opportunity for equality. Let's give everybody an, the same and equal opportunity. Speaking about and then, equality, and let me go to Timbisa. Timbisa, you said that this is an indication that the country is maturing, that democracy is maturing in South Africa. But do you think that South Africa is ready for the concept of a government, of uh, a coalition government? Well, at the national level, I'm not quite sure whether they'll be ready, but at the municipal level, they've already started negotiation, not only in this election, but in a previous election. So they are ready for that. But for me, what's encouraging is the willingness of the bigger parties to accept defeat and to accept that they have to enter into negotiations with smaller parties. But I, I, I like to disagree with you, Hashim, when you said that the action SA and EFF are showing uh, that they're moving much more stronger than other mm. parties. I don't think so. EFF has not been given a clear mandate by anyone to run a municipality. Perhaps you can say that about Asian XA because they're new kids in the block and they've managed to garner a number of, uh, of votes, but I'm not quite sure whether the EFF uh, is growing and that there is a flavor uh, towards uh, EFF. The ANC remains a very strong party, but for me, the polarization within the political space in South Africa is quite encouraging. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. are kind of disgruntled by what's going on, but I think for an African country to have such a, mm -hmm. a vibrant uh, democracy and a vibrant competition of political power is quite encouraging. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I promise you next time we will be able to have another episode to talk about South Africa and its future, Tembisa. Fakude, Kim Heller and Mosiwa, Gerard Patrick, Lekuta, I really appreciate your insight. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com for further discussion. Go to our Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Hashim Ahalbara and the entire team here in Doha. Bye for now.